is what happened round two of the FIM Motocross World Championship. Great Britain at Matley Basin. Maxime Renault held the tightest line through the first corner to grab his first foxhole shot of the season. He was flanked by Simon Langenfelder and the Kawasaki of Mattis Poiré. Jed Beaton was in there as well in fourth position on the opening lap, closely followed by Ruben Fernandez in yellow. Yago Kitz didn't make the best start, but he started to charge his way through from the field. This pass on Bastien Bodin got him into ninth early on. But then Jed Beaton crashed at the bottom one of the hills in fourth whilst challenging Beniston for third. Beniston then fell himself, just overcooked it on one of the jumps. He remounted in fifth. That's where the Frenchman would finish. Geertz was on the prowl again, this time on Rome van der Mosdijk to go seventh. But it was a race win for the second time in his career for Maxim Renault. Fernandez, though, passing Borromé on the final corner to take second from the Frenchman. Two race two, and this time it was Simon Langenfelder on the Diga Procross Gas Gas who held the good line, but it was close as he crossed the foxhole shot line for his first career foxhole shot. Matthias Guadagnini, though, was right in the hunt, and before they reached turn four, he was in front ahead of his Red Bull KTM teammate Rene Hoffer, who then came under attack from Mattis Borome. These two provided the fireworks. Borome went through to second. But then he just pushed too hard. He lost the front end, crashed down to 11th, would eventually finish in seventh place. Maxim Renault, after a poor start, started to climb his way through the field. That pass on Van der Mosdijk, and then later on, René Hoffer got him to second. But the Austrian then came back, sprung a surprise on the Frenchman. The Yamaha man then responded just after the halfway mark to get himself back into second, ahead of Hoffer, who would go on to finish in third place. Ron Van der Mosdijk would come home in fourth. Mattia Guadagnini, the MX2 rookie, would take his first career race win in his rookie season, but it was Maxim Renault in second, who was victorious for only the second time in his career, Hoffer third, Van der Mosdijk fourth. The overall classification, Maxim Renault with a first and a second, with his second career win, Guadagnini with a fourth and a first, his first MX2 podium, and Fernandez with a second and a sixth, gets third overall, and he leads the championship after two rounds. Maxim Renault and Boromé now tie for second, the absent, Vial with a hand injury now drops to eight. But today it was about Maxim Renault standing on the top step of the podium. And Ruben Fernandez taking the championship leader's red plate. Yeah, for sure. I'm a happy man uh, now. Uh, couldn't expect be better race for today. Bounce back after Russia. Uh, yeah, just feels really, really good. Uh, looking, looking forward for the forward for the rest of the season. And uh, yeah, thanks team, thanks Yamaha, thanks everyone. In MXGP race one, it was Jorge Prado from about gate seven or eight from the right hand side that grabbed his second Fox hole shot of the season. Tony Cairoli up the inside of him, Jeremy C around the outside, Glenn Colton off well placed as well, and so too Henry Jacoby. Jacoby will fall on the first lap though. And before the end of the first lap, Cairoli was in front with that move on his teammate Jorge Prado. The two Yamahas were in close pursuit, but not for long, as Hurlings made his way around the outside of Jeremy Sewell. And then almost immediately after that, Tim Geiser also went past the Yamaha man as he chased him down. Hurlings. Hurlings then, sensing an opportunity, he ran cold enough wide to move into third place. And then a half a dozen corners later, Geiser also followed Hurlings through into fourth. That's where he would stay. Roman Fevre made a last-minute pass on Jeremy Siwa to move into seventh, but Tony O'Cairoli crossed the line to win race one for his 179th career win. <laughs> MXGP race two, we saved the best one till last. This time it was Roman Fevre who grabbed the foxhole shot, the first of the season for him on a race that was mixed. It was raining on and off intermittently. He did well to keep the two KTMs at bay, but he made this move around the outside of Borgo Prado before the end of the first lap. Cairoli bobbled, and Geiser moved into third around the outside of the Sicilian. It would get worse for Cairoli as well, because he would eventually get passed by Jeffrey Hurlings around the same time as uh, Geiser made that move on Prado. Cairoli then scrubbed down the inside of Hurlings to take back a position. 
He then went after Prado and Geiser. And then Geiser, a lap and a half to go, found his way onto the rear wheel of Roman Fevre. He made that pass down the hill. But Fevre responded. He did not want to give up the lead that he had held since lap one. Guess what? The two went at it again. And this time it was decisive for Geiser, the team HRC, crossing the line for a 63rd career race win. Fevre disappointed with a second, Cairoli third, Hurlings fourth, and Jeremy Seawert was fifth. And Tony Cairoli crossing the line in third was enough to grab the Italian his 93rd Grand Prix victory, his 173rd podium, ahead of Tim Geiser and Jeffrey Hurlings, who incidentally picked up his 120th career podium. In the championship, Tim Geiser extends his lead over Jeffrey Hurlings now to 15 points. Fevre stays third, but Tony Cairoli and Jorge Prado gain ground. They're now rounding out the top five. But an eighth Grand Prix victory on British soil for Tony Cairoli here at Matchley Basin. But it's Tim Geiser who takes the red plate to Italy, round three. It's amazing, uh, of course. Uh, like I said, it's only my second race uh, after last year, so I, I struggled a little bit in the end of the race. The rhythm of the guys in front was just uh, super fast and uh, I couldn't really hold on. The last four laps I had to give up.